fright and a demon of light and I'll scare you right out of your pants. To a guy in Kentucky, I'm Mr. Unlucky and I'm known throughout England and France. And since I am dead, I can take off my head to recite Shakespearean quotations. No animal, no man can scream like I can with the fury of my recitations. The idea of the dead, what they might do or what they do do, uh, what you'd want them to do, what you imagine they do, is very vivid in a lot of your films. In the culture I grew up with, death was very, you know, people died, you didn't talk about it, you didn't, uh, you know, just, an un, you know, you go to a funeral, it was like, it was like going to a funeral, you know what I mean? And uh, then you'd experience like these other cultures where they would celebrate death, not, you know, celebrate it in the sense of, but just basically celebrating somebody's life. And it just felt so much more passionate and real and positive to me. I remember going down to this place called Olvera Street, which, you know, was a Hispanic area in Los Angeles, and these shops that would have these amazing things from Mexico, Day of the Dead, they were very humorous, little sculptures, like little scenes, they were like almost little movie sets with skeletons in like a beauty parlor or in a pool hall or playing baseball, or just in sort of everyday things, and they were quite naive, so they kind of reminded me of the way I like to draw, plus they were funny and emotional and uh, so I started to get do a little bit of research and 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 get into that and I, I found that again it was that things aren't what they seem he'll never say here's the light side and here's the dark side and we're playing the duality here he'll just talk about how he feels about the movie and we don't spend a lot of time breaking it down analyzing it we never get into kind of a deconstruction Tim said right in the beginning on the corpse bride he said, my, his first concept, he says, before we had all this, you know, he, he, he gave me the script and everything else. He said, in this world, the real world up above is going to be very gray and very somber. And um, even as he talked about it, I heard, like, they, they talked about the ticking clock kind of thing. But underneath, it's a party. So that's very Tim. And when she opened her eyes, she was dead as dust. Her jewels were missing and her heart was bust. So she made a vow lying under that tree that she'd wait for her true love to come set her free. Always waiting for someone to ask for her hand. When out of the blue comes this groovy young man who vows forever to be by her side. And that's the story of our There's something about your films that it's a direct relationship with what has been a neglected tradition as far as adults has been concerned for a long time. But when you look back on European and Western cultures as a whole, a massive tradition which we call fairy stories. Well, I've always felt that those they're very important. I mean, they're, they're you know, they're the, before movies, they were the movies, you know. I mean, that's the sort of... Uh, impact they had, I, I feel, and, and that's why I think I like those kind of movies, is that there's something quite magical about being in a dark room and seeing something, a light come on and a story being told, and when you read some of those old things, it, it gives you that same kind of effect, and I think, again, you're going to in a sort of a semi-bland culture, I was always looking for things to, to, to sort of anchor yourself onto the earth with, you know, to, to kind of kind of look at the mysteries of life and to look at, you know, the abstractions that, that happen in life. And, and you certainly feel those as a child and you certainly feel them as an adult. And so I think it's good to, to, to hang on to those. When we're young, we, we, we take fairy stories not for granted. We take them very, very seriously. They frighten us, they thrill us, they move us, they do all... And they need, they're sort of beaten out of us, aren't they? I think the, the, the energy is, is that it is slightly disturbing. And I think that, that I think adults start to get afraid of that for their children or whatever. And the fact is, that's the whole point of it. But it, they're also fairy stories are full of things that are not what they seem, aren't they? Well, I think, that, and that's, again, it's a great way of learning. You know, I remember, you know, I can actually remember certain feelings as a child where, you know, you're new to the world. And so, you know, there's this whole world going on. So how do you really learn about it? I mean, 
to me, those stories were the way to learn about it. You know, you, you know, for me, watching Frankenstein and seeing the angry villagers, I could relate them to like my neighbors and all. And and actually, it helped me. You know, it helped me to kind of understand that people can be good and be bad, and things aren't what they seem all the time. And it's, it's. I think it's the most positive way of learning about life, because you transfer it to what could be called much more realistic situations, like in Big Fish. You don't intellectualize this as much as feel it, but you seem to be drawing on the fairy tale power to see that realistic story through. Yeah, well, I mean, that was probably the most realistic film I've ever done. And I think part of that had to do that it, it, it sort of came around the time where I, I had a, that kind of experience with my own father. And, you know, when you have the death, a, of, your death of a father. parent, yeah. I mean, it does, it does sort of bring you out of your fantasy world a little bit. I mean, you know, because I did it certainly, uh, live there for a long time and there's nothing like that to kind of sort of make you look at life in a slightly different way uh you really can't expect it until it happens so that, that did feel different to me than than other films i've done for that reason goodbye everybody farewell adieu My girl in the river. So often, your characters are sort of literally patched together. Um, that comes again comes out of a, some sort of idea or feeling. Well, I think it's just a, it's a literal symbol of just you know, the sort of schizof. I mean, the different sides. I mean, I often am very feel quite chaotic and all over the place. And to me, it's a, it's a symbol that represents a certain emotional state that I can relate to. So bits come together and, and, and slightly inside falling you. apart, you know, slightly <laughs> held together by sometimes feeling like the, the, the thinnest of threads. Uh, you can take those kind of abstract feelings and put them into an image. And for me, it says it all that way in, in an image without any words. Yeah, and it's where masks and, and such come into your work as well. Absolutely. I remember uh, talking to Jack Nicholson and him saying, you know, when he did the Joker, it was like it was so liberating to have a mask because you know something else comes out of you when you hide behind a mask and that's what i think all those great horror movie actors realize is that you know by hiding behind something uh you know you're able to 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 have something from your subconscious come out you know i mean you know johnny depp's the same way i like the actors that work that love hiding behind characters and masks because they they experience something that they wouldn't experience otherwise